Dear colleagues, welcome to my hospital at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a mature senile cataract and in this case I have planned extracapsular cataract extraction with a rigid IOL implantation. Superior rectus brittle suture has been applied. The ocular surface is being thoroughly irrigated applying povidone iodine 5% and ringer lactate. Now conjunctival peritomy for a length of about 10 mm is being done. The conjunctiva is a small radial cut and then just go along the limbus and cut at the limbus. The conjunctiva is not dissected too much behind, just this much. And now wet field cautery is done just one millimeter behind the limbus. Lot of blood vessels are not destroyed. This is enough. And now a 50 number BP blade is used to make the incision just posterior to the limbus, about one millimeter posterior to the limbus. In this case, my plan is to make a very small tunnel up to one millimeter into clear cornea. I am using this crescent blade to make the tunnel. Should be a very nice dissection along on plane. We should not change the plane. And this is very easy for the beginners don't have to make a very large tunnel just a small tunnel one millimeter behind and one millimeter in front of the limbus so this is two millimeter wide and about 10 millimeter along entry And now, make a side port at around 9 o'clock. Inject an air bubble and use tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble to stain the anterior capsule. If you stain the anterior capsule, you will be able to see the capsule very nicely and you can do capsulotomy very confidently. Wash the dye out. Now inject viscoelastic substance into the anterior chamber. Use 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now take a 26 gauge bent needle and in this case since this is a mature intumescent cataract rexis is not easy continuous curvilinear capsulorexis is not easy you can do a can opener capsulotomy by adjacent cuts like this in ECC you can do can opener capsulotomy. We have done this in many cases in the 90s. And now 
inject some more scholastic substance take the keratome and just enter into the anterior chamber and come out so you have a 2.8 millimeter entry now hold this capsular tag and guide this tag like this and tear it off so in this case you have done can opener capsulotomy for about two-third and one-third is use of rexis forceps and now see how to enlarge the wound take a keratome and cut when you go forward never cut when you come backward towards the sclera cut when you go forward into the anterior chamber and now do hydro resection and as you inject some fluid you can see that the nucleus has prolapsed very easily and now do visco expression inject some visco in front and with visco cannula go behind the nucleus keep injecting and at the same time depress the posterior leap of the wound and see how smoothly the nucleus gets delivered because it is a large wound and now you have to remove the cortical matter you can use this simco cannula there is viscoelastic substance in the anterior chamber and it is not a vertical cut it is a small tunnel and you can easily remove lot of cortex through the main incision going through the main incision and the antechamber doesn't become shallow if you just lift the anterior lip of the incision yes so a lot of cortical matter has been removed now go through the side port and remove the cortex from the superior aspect yes so cortical clean off is done very nicely you can see the capsular tags and you can see that the rexis can opener rexis has given away at around 1.30 o'clock now inject viscoelastic substance take the rigid 6 millimeter optic intraocular lens PMML lens hold it with a Macpherson's forceps and place it in the capsula bag that is behind the rim of the anterior capsule if you place it in the sulcus then also it's not a problem now see the suture this is a continuous shoelace suture first bite going into the groove and the needle comes out on the scleral side now I am not going to edit this part of the surgery I want to teach you this suturing technique this is the second bite and it includes both anterior leaf and the posterior leaf the first bite is only at the posterior leaf going into the groove now again this is the third bite it includes both the anterior leaf and the posterior leaf and now this is the fourth bite 
and you can see that we have reached the right end of the wound and now we're going back towards the other end towards the left end this is the fifth bite and it is exactly in between the two bites it includes both the anterior leaf and the posterior leaf please learn this suturing technique this shoelace suture it is very much essential in a repair of many situations this is the sixth bite includes both anterior leaf and the posterior leaf of the wound and now this is the seventh bite and you can see that we have almost reached the left end and now this is the final bite includes only the anterior leaf of the wound comes at the gap between the two wounds it comes out through that gap yes and now use a macpherson's forceps and a street suture tying forceps to pull the sutures like this if you pull the sutures like this it looks beautiful yes and now go through this wound without tying it and remove the viscoelastic substance that you have used for implantation of the intraocular lens remove the viscoelastic substance very nicely there is some cortex at around 10 o'clock it has been removed at this time and now inject some air and inject some moxifloxacin now you come back to the wound take the macpherson's forceps and the straight suture tank again and now pull the sutures like this and now pull the other suture other thread yes and now this thread without the needle is being trimmed to make it short and now put the knot take two throws this is the final pull take two throws one and two hold this thread and as you pull you can see that the knot is going into the tunnel this is another throw and this is the final throw so this is a two one on suture and now trim the threads be careful not to cut the knot so cut it close to the knot but never include the knot and just push the 
not into the tunnel. And now remove the air, make a final lavage of the anterior chamber. This is the this is a twenty uh, three gauze Simco cannula. This is the final lavage and remove the air bubbles. Even if you don't remove all the air bubbles, it doesn't matter. But you can remove the air bubbles and check the integrity of the wound and just inject some gentamicin and dexamethasone little behind and this will cause apposition of the conjunctiva to the limbus. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in learning ECCE.